Welcome back everybody. Today we're going to talk about sampling distributions um, and the central limit theorem. This is only part one of a two-part series. Today we're going to do a lot of the theory and then in part two we'll put it into practice. All right, so I want to give you a few minutes on what sampling distributions is all about. I think it'll make the central limit theorem a whole lot easier. All right. So up until now, we've mostly been talking about um, populations. So for example, we have dealt with mu, we've dealt with our variance, and we've dealt with our standard deviation. But these are all of the population. All right. However, statistics is a lot more useful because it is um, the mathematics of working with samples. So in sampling distributions, that's what we're going to work with. We're going to work with samples. So our statistic We're going to work with samples. So for example, X bar, which is our sample mean. We're going to work with P hat, P with a little hat on it. It's called P hat, our sample proportion. All right, our sample variance. And S, which is our sample standard deviation. All right, now the central limit theorem provides an adjustment to the formulas that we've been already been using, but there's a lot of legwork that goes into that adjustment. And I'm going to show you a little bit about that legwork in part one. All right, so the idea behind sampling proportions is this, is that Let's say our class had 27 students in it and I wanted samples of four. I wanted samples of five, let's say, because I wanted to do a poll. So I could split you up into, you know, groups of five. How many different groups of five could I do or how many different groups of four could I do? If the order doesn't matter, you're talking about a combination 27 C4, or if I chose 5, it'd be 27 C5. All right, why don't you pause the video, take a minute, and see what that number is. All right, hopefully you paused that video and you checked out the number. Uh, the number's pretty high. So, for example, if we wanted to, you know, just take a bunch of samples even of just a small number of four or five people out of 27, you're talking about 80,000 samples. You're talking about potentially more. Not really realistic in the real world. So what the central limit theorem says is that if I take a few of the samples, I could potentially approximate what my population mean is or what my population proportion is. And I'm going to try to illustrate the idea behind that by using a very small example. All right. So I never used to use this example before. I saw somebody else do it and I really liked it. So I took it and I'm going to use it. Um, let's say we only had three numbers in the world. Uh, let's say one, two, and five. All right. So those are the only three numbers we have to choose from. And so I want to know what is the pro population proportion of odd numbers. All right, that's my first question. Well, with only three numbers, it's kind of easy. I have two odd numbers out of three. 
So the answer is two thirds, right? Well, in the real world, we have many more than just three numbers, right? So we couldn't necessarily just count them and do a proportion. So I'm going to, sh like I said, I'm going to show you a little bit of the legwork that goes into using samples to estimate population. All right. So n, as far as our samples go, is the number in the is the number of units in the sample. So I want samples of size two. So I can do one one. I could do one two. I could do one five. Right. I could also do. I'm gonna separate these a little bit. Two one. Two 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 five. I could do five one five two and five five. All right, so there's column one. And my probability, my probability of getting any of the samples right is going to be one ninth right because if I want to draw one two right I can be one ninth now I did cheat a little bit but I cheated for you guys so for example two one and one two if the order doesn't matter um, they're technically the same sample but if I take the one ninth and the one ninth and I put them together as two ninths, I'm going to use the probability to make that adjustment. Hope you forgive me, but I think it illustrates things a lot better if I have a few extra samples to choose from. All right, so there's my probability. Now I want my p hat. My p hat is the proportion of odd numbers in each sample. So my p hat for sample one, I have two odd numbers out of two, so that's 1.0. I have one odd number out of two, so that's 0 0.5, 1.0, 0.5. .5. Then I have two even numbers, so 0, 0.5. 1.0, uh, 0 0.5, and 1.0. All right. So now, in order to get our mean, right, we did x times p of x, right? So let's do x times p of x for each sample, right? So I get 1 ninth, 1 18th, 1 ninth, 1 18th. See how that adjusted to 1 18th? So this one would be 0, 1 18th. One ninth, one eighteenth, and one. Hang on, ninth. I'm gonna bring that back, and we didn't just do x times p of x. We did the sum of x times p of x. So why don't you pause the video, take a minute, add up all of these x times p of x, and hopefully we're going to wind up with two-thirds. All right, so pause the video now, add them up, and I will talk on the back end. All right, hopefully when you added them up, you wind up getting two-thirds because that's what it is. So if we had the power to count up all our samples, we could get our population mean. Obviously, 
in our country of 300 million people. We don't have the ability to count up every sample, excuse me. So we need to utilize mathematics to help us. Uh, let's just try one more quick one. All right, let's take the same problem, which means our population is one, two, and five again. And let's get our mu. Mu is one plus two plus five over three, which would be eight thirds. All right, now if I use all my samples and do the same process and add them up, I should wind up getting eight thirds. Let's try it. So let's make that chart again. So my samples are going to be one, one, and two comma five, five, one, Excuse me, five, two, and five, five. All right, so now the probability of each sample again would be one ninth. Right, and now I need my X bar. What is the average of each of my samples? So why don't you pause the video, take a minute, just to quickly review average. Let's do the average of each sample. All right, I'll give you the answers on the back end. All right, so my average of one and one is just gonna be one. My average of one and two is 1.5. My average of one and five is three. Then it's 1.5, then two, then seven halves, then three, then three halves, then five. All right, so now, uh, last thing I want you to do is, again, we're going to do the sum of x times p of x. All right, so at this point, I want you to pause the video. I'll actually make one more column, and you can do x times p of x right here and add them up. And we'll talk on the back end. All right, so hopefully you did your x times p of x. You added them all up. The answer you should have gotten was 8 thirds, which again is what our target was. Now, we were able to get exactly our target because we had all of our samples. But like I said, very often you're not going to have all your samples. Uh, as illustrated at the beginning of this video, just to have 25 people or 30 people in a room and get samples of five, all right, that's gonna be an awful lot of samples. So you're not gonna, it's not realistic to say you're gonna do every single sample, which is why we use sampling distributions or the central limit theorem, which is what we'll talk about in part two in order to do that, all right? This is just the legwork that goes into it. I just want you to understand what we're doing. All right, so to, so the summary to wrap up. All right, our sample mean, right, is a good estimator in statistics, we say targets, our population mean.
which basically says the more X bars we have, the more samples we take, the more X bars we have, the closer we can get to what mu is. All right, without even knowing what mu is to start. The same with our sample proportion. Targets our population proportion. So just like our first example, right, again, so proportion could be like percentage, could be like a political poll. So for example, you say, how in the world can they poll 1,500 people and figure out what the whole country wants to do? Well, maybe one poll might be off, but if you take three or four of these polls, all of a sudden we have three or four samples of 1,500 or 1,000 people that will closer estimate our, the population proportion of people who want to vote for the president or people who want to vote for his challenger or something like that. All right, so these are the two that we illustrated. The third one I didn't illustrate, but it still is a good target, sample variance. Targets are population variance. All right, and we're going to work with all three of these before this, before our time is up. Um, maybe not today, but over the course of the next uh, couple of sections. The one thing that I do want you to take away is that our standard deviation is going to be used in all these formulas, but it is not a good estimator of the population standard deviation. All right, so typically our sample standard deviation undercounts our population standard deviation. So we won't work with standard deviation as an estimator, um, but we'll use it in our formulas. All right, so that's basically it for part one, quick, um, and like I said, more conceptual. Uh, part two will be the more practical, will be the central limit theorem, we'll put it into practice. Look forward to seeing you then. All right, thanks.